we're going to use polyvinyl ethyl ether to examine how charge compensation alters spectra in XPS. The reason polyvinyl ethyl ether is useful for examining charge compensation is the carbon 1s spectrum includes two peaks and these peaks are separated so there is a valley between the peaks and this valley changes depending on how the compensation is performed on the sample. One consequence of charge compensation is that the binding energy scale is not absolute. The peak position now depends on the steady state charge state of the sample and if this steady state is different as in this case you can see that the peaks have shifted you have the same characteristic shape but the peaks themselves and if we look at the range of these angles you can see that you get a range of peak positions depending on the angle and this is because the charge compensation and the efficiency of the co charge compensation is changing as a function of the takeoff angle when presented with a set of data that has been measured with different charge compensation states you have to shift the data so that you can m compare like with like in terms of binding energy so the first thing we'll do is do the charge correction for these data and I'll do it for the whole set of these data by constructing a peak model and the peak model will give us the peak position of one of these peaks against which we can then shift data in order to work out a binding energy scale that is consistent for the entire set of measurements independent of the charge state so let's create a region and then a pair of components and in fact what I'll do is I'll swap these round and I will also select a line shape that I've previously prepared which I have developed so that I get a fairly good fit to the data envelope using two peaks and the idea is that this will provide us the mechanism by which we will identify a peak maximum in this case this one here and the reason that it's this one is I've arranged it to be the first one on the components property page and I believe this to be the CH peak in polyvinyl ethyl ether whereas this second peak represents oxygen bonded to carbon and these two peaks should be of equal size you can see they're not quite of equal size but these are good enough in terms of identifying peak positions for charge correction so what I have now is for each one of these spectra I have a peak model and the peak model is essentially defining a position for each one of these spectra so I select and then I bring up the spectrum processing dialog window on the calibration property page to perform the charge compensation I need to enter a true value which I'll say is 285 EV binding energy and that's going to correspond to this CH peak here and then I'm going to say shift regions and components and what will happen when I say apply by row first component it's going to take this first component here in column A it's going to use the energy that I've specified here and then it's going to shift each one of these spectra on a on a row by row basis based on the calculated shift that's required to place this peak here at 285 electron volts so when I press this button well, what I'll do is I'll overlay them so we can see it happen so I say apply by row first component and you can see now that these carbon 1s peaks have all aligned based on the CH peak and the very next thing I will do is copy these and copy the process data only for these shifts into a new file so that now preserves a set of C1S spectra where the peaks all align the reason that I've copied these into a new file is because I would like to manipulate these data and try and understand what shapes actually lie beneath the differences from say the 45 degrees and the 10 degree angles
And these shapes are only due to charge compensation because the, these are identical samples measured under identical conditions. So we'll go to the calculator property page. And I've just overlaid in the active tile the 45 degree and the 10 degree VAMAS blocks. And I'm going to use these different spectra. And different spectra allow us to examine how these spectra change as we alter the pro different proportions of the two original spectra. So we're searching through these data, these different spectra, until we find spectral forms that look like they're something of interest to us. So in this case, I'm, I'm selecting one here that I believe to be the m most likely representative of a a more precise form of the polyvinyl ethyl ether spectrum. That's to say I've got two sharp peaks, a deeper valley, and the the shape seems to be reasonably good as well in terms of the the wings. So I'll, I'll assume this one is going to be the the spectrum that will be representative of polyvinyl ethyl ether. So next we need to find a shape that complements the better form of polyethyl ether and it's going to represent some other characteristic of these data that we're not quite sure what it's going to be yet but it's something along these lines here. So let's just choose this one and see how well that works out. So we've now got two shapes that's the one that's representative of the data that we're genuinely interested in and this is another shape that appears to be within these two spectra and what we would like to do is see how well these two shapes reproduce all of these spectra that were measured from polyvinyl ethyl ether at different angles so I'll copy the two shapes into this file and overlay them in the active tile then select the ones that I'm interested in analyzing so I've got two vectors here that represent spectra and these are the spectra that will be analyzed in terms of these two component vectors when I press the generate spectra button. So when we overlay each row here we can now have a look at and see how well these two spectra, these are the component spectra here, uh, are representing the data. So within this file here we've got four these represent the two that are the component spectra, the original data, and a spectrum that is constructed by adding these two component spectra. So the reproduction is really quite good here. And as we go down, we can see that we're getting a reproduction that is good throughout the entire data set. So we now have something that looks like polyvinyl ethyl ether and another shape that is a consequence of the charge compensation. As you can see that shape is smallest at 45 degrees and at 90 degrees it's larger and at 10 degrees it's quite substantial. So if this represents what's happening to the data as the charge compensation is altering as a function of the angle then we now have some way of interpreting why this spectrum changed as the charge state changed with angle.